Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin using logarithmic regression. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. In an effort to practice what I preach, I actually took the last week off, uh, went on vacation in an effort to enjoy the summer, right? Trying to get out, get out from the charts for a little bit and, and try to do some other stuff. But I am back now and we'll try to make regular videos once again. Now, you guys know that we like to talk about Bitcoin through the lens of logarithmic regression. And the reason is because using logarithmic regression, we can fairly adequately model the price behavior of Bitcoin over the macro scale, where more accelerated growth occurs earlier on and it tempers out as you as you continue to navigate through time. This is one of the reasons why a lot of people prefer altcoins is because they can, you know, they, they can potentially give you higher returns in a bull market. We also know they can lose a lot in a, in a bear market. But I, I want to talk about this because we're only a few months away from where I'll likely refit the lower regression curve. You might wonder, why does it need to be refit? Well, first of all, that curve is fit to quote unquote non-bubble data. Meaning the data that's used to go into this green band to, to fit it is only data sort of at the end of bear markets and preceding a future bull market. So like in, in these in these areas right here. OK, and the reason is because or the rationale is why fit the data to, you know, to a period that is irrational. Why not fit it to data when the tourists are no longer here? Right. What, what is the you know, everything they like to say, right, everything reverts to the mean. If you imagine that the green line is more or less sort of like where Bitcoin eventually reverts to, that is ultimately the area that gives you, it gives you a lot more bang for your buck, so to speak. OK, now we do have to refit it every market cycle. This is something I said in 2019. We said it in 2020, 2021. And, and as we are sort of waiting for this next, you know, for the for the next cycle to get underway, we, it does it does beg the question, well, eventually, where will we or when will we actually refit it? One of the reasons why it's important, in my opinion, to refit it every cycle is because you have more data. So why not slightly tweak it every, you know, every few years so that you can, so you can potentially get a better fit? And the reason is because if you can imagine only fitting the data to say, or only fitting this curve to say data over here, you would have actually, I actually did a whole video on this. I was trying to find it. Maybe, maybe someone can find it and put it in the comments. Um, but there's a video where I show if you only fit it to say this data and this data, you know, you would actually get a curve, um, you know, that, that that maybe looks something like this, where it would have been a lot more optimistic as to as to where it would have ultimately gone, right? And and so you would ultimately need to refit it. And if you would only fit it to say this, this, and then say this data over here, it would have given you a curve that that perhaps looks something i mean this is just i'm just you know eyeballing it right um but it would have given you a curve that looks something like maybe like this right and then eventually you can see that every cycle is sort of converging to what it what it actually should be um or you know or where ideally it's ultimately going and so the current green band is fit to you know this data this this and then also the first few months the latter the latter part of 2018 and the first few months of 2019. It, in fact, does not include any data from late 2019 or 2020. Like, so none of this data is included in this fit. And it still did a relatively good job of showing the accumulation phase before the next bull market. We talked about this at length in 2019 and 2020, right? The idea that crypto provided basically the best risk-adjusted returns we could find, given the fact that we were all the way down here, we were gearing up, and we were likely gearing up for another Bitcoin bull run. Now we find ourselves in a very similar, uh, in, a, in a similar circumstance where the tourists have left and we are back, you know, in fact, back in this region and we can spend a while in this region. Now, the reason it's important to refit, as I said, is if you don't refit it, then eventually it, it starts to become um, not as good of a, of a, of a, of a curve to identify exactly where is that reaccumulation zone. My plan is as we get closer to the end of this year, will be to refit the green band so that it's just slightly more accurate. Again, each cycle, it, it, it subtly shifts just a little bit, you know, just a little bit. But after every cycle, like the delta in the shift is shrinking, right? So, you know, if you'd only fit it to say a little bit of data over here, 
and then you continue to add more data, that that difference in the curve from one cycle to another is 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 actually shrinking because ultimately I think Bitcoin is just sort of converging, um, or, or the, the the curve is is slowly converging to where it ultimately will be. Um, but when you look at this um, when you look at this curve, we know right now that we are in fact below the fair value fit to non-bubble data, right? So the fair value of Bitcoin fit to non-bubble data, according to this curve, is around 24K, right? And we're currently sitting just below that. Um, but I, I think it's important to remember that a, a refit will only slightly adjust it. My guess is a couple thousand dollars, maybe, you know, a few thousand dollars is how much it might, it might affect it. I don't really think it's going to affect it that much. But one of the reasons why I, I like looking at this is also in the context of our bull market support band. Why? Well, because one of the things that we know with the bull market support band is that, first of all, it becomes a bear market resistance band when we're in a bear market, right? We've been in a bear market for quite some time. But usually it takes Bitcoin getting back to the regression band, fit to non-bubble data, before we actually can realistically sustain a, a you know, at least hold the line at the 20-week SMA. Right before we have a chance to, right? So you can see in 2019, you know, we were basically just rejected by this for the entire bear market, and then we ultimately got above it once the fair value was, or once the 20 week SMA went below the fair value. Okay, so that's something we should look at. And then you can also see in 2015, the same type of thing, right? It wasn't until the 20 week went below the fair value that Bitcoin actually was able to get back above it and, and start us off on, on another bull run. Now, remember, you might be looking at this and saying, well, does that mean we just have to wait for the bull market support band to get back below the fair value? Now, the 20-week the SMA right now is currently at around 31K. The 21-week EMA is at 29K. So it's coming down quickly. I mean, it, it ranges from 29K to 31K. It's not that far away from where we currently are. I mean, give it a few more months and we'll be there. Two, two months, right? Two, three months. We'll be there. Um, but it's important to remember, again, that when we, re we fit this, it's going to shift down very, very subtly, okay? So it might shift down to the tune of a few thousand dollars. The, the point in all this is, is to basically say, look, I mean, right now the Fed is, it hasn't pivoted yet, right? Interest rates are still going up. The halving's out in 2024. Um, we got some work to do for a while, right? And there's probably gonna be a lot of chop in this range. Remember, the regression band's gonna shift down very, very slightly. Uh, to the tune of a few thousand dollars. But what we're ultimately looking for is for this bull market support band, the bear market resistance band, right, to come down into this range so that we can finally try to try to actually overtake it and then gear up for another bull market. That is what I'm, you know, trying to look forward to. And and recognizing that, you know, the, the chop right now is is sort of a, I know it's a boring time. You know, a lot of people are, are wishing Bitcoin would be a little bit more lively. And perhaps we will see some volatility over the next few months, maybe not only to the downside, but also to the upside as well, where it just kind of chops for a while. You can see that it does do that um, in, in these types of markets. It's not like it just goes flat, right? It'll it'll chop around for a while. And and you can also see that even in 20, you know, over here, it, it chopped around for a good bit. But I do think it's reasonable to to you know to expect a, a continued grind for a while with Bitcoin, and to eventually you know eventually we will see that bull market support band come down very very likely go below the fair value, and and after after that then you could argue we have a, a much more realistic chance of of um you know trying to actually fight back above it and in a more sustained way than than something that just looks like this where it sort of just pokes its head above it for a couple days and then and then decides nope and and, and then goes back down so give us some time and uh you'll you'll see you'll see this eventually come back down the the top band i know a lot of people have asked if i'm going to refit that one i i probably will but honestly i'll probably fit it to, to 64k not 69. i do think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that 64k was a more important peak this cycle than 69k there was a lot more interest at the time it was a lot more a lot more manic there were a lot more social interest. On-chain indicators suggested early 2021 was a more technical top. Uh, therefore, I will likely refit the red band as well, but it'll include four data points as opposed to um, only three, right? So this current red band was only fit to three data points. And, and you know, when we when we made that fit, you know, a couple two or three years ago, it, it always seemed very far away. And in fact, we actually made it back to it, right? <laughs> despite the fact that we were down here at 10K or, or, you know, 8K, 7K, whenever we did this, despite the fact that that seemed so far away, we in fact did make it there. 
but we will also refit the upper band as well just so it includes that $69,000 or $64,000 range it'll it'll very subtly shift it down as well but then hopefully it gives us an idea of, of what's uh, at least more realistically achievable during a you know a future market cycle anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the content make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed give the video a thumbs up if you guys want access to this and a lot of other charts remember check out into the cryptoverse premium at into the cryptoverse premium or sorry, at intothecryptoverse.com. That'll wrap it up for this video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.